I find, and this is no exaggeration, probably about 80 to 90% of the time that something goes wrong for me, it's because someone else was incompetent or didn't do their job. Just being honest. You know, obviously, people want to hear from me about a particular topic, which I will address on today's show in as much detail as I can, because here's the thing. Number one, I don't want to spill the beans and completely spoil everything. And number two, I'm legally bound. There's actually a lawyer. He's sitting in my closet right now. I'm serious. And he is watching me for everything that I say. And if I say something wrong, he's going to come out here and he's going to beat me on the head with a ruler and say, you're going right to a nice lawsuit, buddy. I'm just kidding, obviously. It's not, it's not all that serious at all. I'm just joking. Please don't take this serious. I'm trying to be silly. And there'll be people who'll be like, what? Phil's being uh, sued and he's a... No, absolutely not. I'm just being, you know, I'm just being silly here. Anyway, <clears throat> you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You aren't funny. You don't make content. You're ugly. You suck. Last year was a very drama-filled, nonsensical year for me against my will and against my wishes, correct? We, I think we can all agree. Last year, there was a lot of very negative talk about me on the internet, in some cases from really big YouTubers, right? Now, in some cases, being very transparent here, when I got criticized by Moist Critical, and he was like, dude, I can't believe he's saying the things he's saying on his streams to his viewers about income and stuff like that. It seems very, you know, disrespectful. He doesn't seem like he has any gratitude. You know, you can't say that kind of stuff. That resonated with me. It struck a chord, correct? And I agreed with him after watching myself back. You know, this is from like the fall of 2022, okay? After watching myself back, <clears throat> that stuff, I was like, he's right. He's absolutely right. I sometimes get so full of, of, of emotion, whether it's fear, you know, because of finan finances and stuff like that, or it could be many different things. Anger when I'm playing Street Fighters, all these things. Whenever I get full of emotion, I tend to just go off the cuff and say things that I probably should not publicly say, right? Um, and I should be called out for it, rightfully. However, oh my god, help! He's a foreign barker, and he's black! <laughs> help! He's black! Hey, I felt that at that point, there were too many people who had only heard the negative and had no idea about the positive about me. You know, obviously, if I'm here after 15 years and I have a community who watches me every day, likes my content and supports it, I'm doing something right, all right? I wouldn't still be here if I wasn't doing something right. There's people who are here for a good positive reason. And I felt like it wasn't fair because these big YouTubers who always name drop me never examined that half of it. They only examine the negative because that's what gets thrown in their face by the toxicity of YouTube. That's how YouTube works. Promote the toxic, push the negative forward, right? <clears throat> and so I, I said, if you're gonna talk bad about me, why not interview me, correct? Like, why not just talk to me directly? Because if I felt like if someone would just have a conversation with me to see that I'm a real guy, I'm not just some asshole who you see the negative highlights of, but I'm actually just a real person, Perhaps you'd think a little differently, all right? Nope. So I presented that to the internet, and basically, the only people who contacted me were drama brokers and people who were looking to boost their own presence on YouTube. You know, it wasn't like a Moist Critical who reached out to me and said, yeah, let's do an interview. It was like, Review Tech USA, you know? Oh, let's do an interview. No, you already every day name drop me because you don't make your own content. You just make drama and you name drop me for drama purposes, you have no content of your own, I'm not going to give you more free content. You're out of your mind, you see? I wanted to have a real conversation with someone and it didn't happen, right? <clears throat> so then fast forward to March. And what happened was completely unrelated to anything in that realm of discussion, okay? Side Scrollers was a new podcast that was relaunching on the internet. Um, all bolstered by when I was on it. And by, by the way, my interview continues to be the most watched thing they've ever done. The funny part about it is the interview never actually did anything in the realm of what I wanted. The whole point of the interview that I wanted to do was that people who don't know about me can watch the interview, learn, and then there's no questions anymore about that stuff. In the end, all that interview ever did 
was it went around my detractor circles. That's it. It didn't actually hit mainstream. No one really cared about that interview outside of the detractors. So it didn't really get to serve the purpose. But I'll say this, at the very least, basically all the bullshit about those, those negative things, those questions, those accusations, the conspiracies, it all went away. If you don't notice, no one really comes on my stream and talks about it anymore because I've already said my piece and I'm not wasting time anymore with that shit. I'm done with it. I told you guys, I'm done with those topics. We're done with it, right? Oh, fake controversy, fake bullshit to cause drama, all right? I don't play that game. I don't give two fucks about you trying to cause drama. Nobody gives a shit, especially me. And if you have an issue with this, you can go fuck yourself. So, after that, I made it my philosophy to stay out of drama. And I said, I'm not going to be doing any interviews. I'm not going to be doing any kind of anything with anyone. Even though people did reach out to me. Oh, I want to interview Phil and this or that. Even, what's his name? Mudahar or whatever. He reached out to me. Oh, I'm going to pay you $5,000 for an interview. And I said, I don't want your money. I'll do an interview, but we're not talking about this drama. I've already addressed it. All the conspiracies are just that. I'm not wasting my time. If you want to have an intelligent discussion about interesting topics, I'll do it. The moment you bring up drama, I'm gone. And then he ghosted me and never contacted me ever again. Because all these people want is drama. They don't actually want to talk about facts like fucking mature adults. All they want is milk drama so they can make money on YouTube. They're all fucking greedy. So anyway, I stayed out of it. Completely, 100%. And I didn't address any more of this bullshit for the rest of 2023. And things went smoothly. However, there were still people who tried to pull me in. Right? These idiots trying to get me to go on a fucking podcast that I never was never involved in whatsoever. And they lied about that and tried to make shit up and talking shit about me. People making documentaries about me. Right? Which is hilarious. The whole term documentary is hilarious. Because if all you do is research shit that's already on the internet and you regurgitate it into a two hour video and all you do is add a little bit of commentary, that's not a documentary. You've done, everyone else did work for you. All you did was regurgitate the, co the toxicity and the, and the conspiracy. You added really nothing besides a little bit of commentary on top. That's not a documentary. What? Always in the back of my head, I'm, I'm always wondering, and I've told you guys this too, I don't think anyone's ever going to give me a fair shake on the internet. I just don't believe it. It seems like everyone is out for the drama. Everyone's out for personal gain. What's better? To completely spin something in a way that makes me look horrible for clickbait views that will benefit you or to actually show me in a fair light. I'm not even saying show me in a positive light. I'm saying show me in a fair light to actually have another side of the story to see what it's actually like from my perspective, to go through this, to live through all of this slander and nonsense that's happened to me for all these years, to just be a guy trying to get by with my community and having a good time and ignoring all the bullshit and then having to hear that constantly this stuff is going on outside, right? So, basically, all right, I got contacted by someone who is a neutral party, someone who does not stand to benefit by actually portraying me in an incredibly negative way because it wouldn't it wouldn't it basically let me put it this way if you're someone who wants to actually make real content if you're not someone who's a drama hound if you're not someone who is uh again a keem star a review tech someone who all of your content is based on making someone look bad correct if you're someone who actually wants to make legit content then you actually have to be fair. I'm good. Because the moment that you're not, who else would ever want to work with you again, right? If someone, if you portray someone in an unfair way that makes them look awful, then no one else is ever going to want to work with you either. You understand? It has to be some way where you're actually being fair to the, the subject matter, all right? So, basically, I was contacted by Mike Klum, who recently did a documentary on Boogie. And before everyone freaks out about this, because I know a lot of people saw the Boogie documentary and were like, wow, that documentary was not positive. That documentary was very negative. It shows all the weaknesses of Boogie, all his shortcomings, the fact that he basically pissed his life away, all his money away, that he's a toxic guy who falls into drama and he has all these issues. You're right. 
But that's what they wanted to do with that documentary, you understand? That's actually what they wanted to portray in that documentary. That was the whole point. To show that side of his life, which I guess they felt had never been really revealed before. Um, that's exactly what was what they were going for, okay? I was contacted by Mike, and he says, basically, this is fascinating. There's people out there who want to see a documentary about you. But he didn't know that much about me, okay? So, by the way, and just for the record, this was months ago. This was not yesterday. This was months ago, okay, where we actually began talking behind the scenes about stuff like this. And basically, through a series of conversations, okay, that I had with this guy, as I explained my story to him, he was basically like, so you're, this is completely different from Boogie. Yeah, it's not even close. My life is nothing like his. I'm not in the situation he's in. <clears throat> you know, my, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, and other people can disagree, I feel like in my, my position is a much better position than his. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like him, he's in horrible health. Financially, he's distraught. He can't make ends meet. He's desperate, which is why he's on things like this lol cow show where he's getting on his hands and knees and being mistreated by Keemstar to make money. Um, he's in a real desperate way, right? That's very much not the case, okay, with me. I have a successful business. <laughs> I enjoy coming to stream with you guys every day. I love what I do for a living. I'm making it happen. Right? I'm getting out of a horrible financial position in my life, which happened already, and I'm all, I'm climbing out of it. It's slow progress, but it's definitely progress, right? My story is basically that even though I've made all of these improvements over the years, and I am not representative of what people make me out to be anymore, maybe one day, 10, 15 years ago, I was really bad. I was obstinate, I was stubborn, I was stupid, I said and did awful things, right? And I got away with it, basically. And now here we are 15 years later, and I'm still able to run a business, albeit a much smaller scale business than what I used to do. But I'm still popular, I still have a fan base, and people still talk about me, right? The problem is constant misrepresentation. And you might say, well, I don't get it because you, you already have addressed everything. You're right. I have addressed all of the bullshit and nonsense out there. However, I addressed it here, right? And no one listens to me when I say it on my own content. A silly one to me a dollar says, great gameplay. I consider this the newest day. Newest day. It's like one newest day. That's not a word. I've gone down from the rafters. Okay. I consider this the newest day and gone. I've gone down from the rafters. What? No one. This is me talking to my audience who already, it's like, it's like what do they call, you're preaching to the choir? You guys already know the deal, right? The fact is, most people don't. There's no central place you can go on the internet for the story of Dark Side Phil. It's this detractor content, this detractor content, this documentary that's way outdated and has outdated information, this documentary that just regurgitates the detractor conspiracy theories. There's literally nowhere you can go to say, I want to learn about Dark Side Phil. Why does everyone talk about this guy? I don't get it. And get an actual answer that's fair and makes sense. Okay? And so, after having ta talked to Mike, all right, the idea that we came up with was to do a documentary that's going to, for the first time ever, and I'm going to say this, likely for the last time ever, cover my actual real story me growing up what it was like right how i got into games you know what it was like when i was a kid ask my parents you know what was it like raising phil and stuff like that right um going through the arcade days going through the the street fighter days growing up in arcades and how it became this kind of uh how do they say almost fraternity culture and shit talking was encouraged, right? And how that carried into my competitive Street Fighter career in the 2000s and how it became an innate part of who I was for a very long time. How eventually, after having a back injury and deciding to quit competitive Street Fighter, how that turned into a job becoming a YouTuber, right? And how I somehow got this popularity doing content on YouTube that not very many people were doing, 
right? The improv commentary style. Um, and basically making it popular, right? I was the innovator. <laughs> Snake. Snake? Yes! Yes! Of the video game playthrough back in the day. I was. But most people won't give me credit for that because they want to, oh, it was this person or this person. I was the person who made it mainstream popular on YouTube. And then everyone else decided to run with it and change it up and do it differently. But I was the guy who made that improv commentary style popular. All right? And then after that, you know, the entire story of how I became popular for a two or three year period. I was one of the top YouTubers. But then how this is how you don't play soured public opinion against me. How it turned the crowd against me and how that affected me. How these groups of detractors formed online social communities around hating on me and how it changed everything, how they staged attacks against me to ruin the business and how I went on a big decline as a result of stagnation and bad choices on my part, but just as much their actions as well. And basically doing all of that in a way that number one covers facts, but also is entertaining. Because ultimately the last thing you wanna do is have a documentary about someone that's boring, okay? That boogie documentary is sad. I don't want to make a documentary about me that's sad. What's the point? I don't want people crying and having a sob story about Dark Side Phil. My life is not a sob story. It's interesting. People have said, would you ever write a, 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 an autobiography or whatever? Maybe one day I would, but I never really thought about that. And then when I start talking to Mike, he's like, no, your story is interesting. The more I hear, the more I'm hooked. I want to hear more things about you, you know, about how this, this journey happened or whatever. This is not... A, 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 a crying situation about how awful things are. My life is not awful, right? But it stands to reason that to actually have a fair documentary about me that covers everything, my whole history. I've never gotten a fair shake before. Never. You're right. Every single person has screwed me over. Whoever tried, you know, tried to do something, right? So that's the point. Now, here's the thing. Does this mean that there's no one going to be involved negatively? Of course not. They're going to be in there. Everyone's going to be in this thing. I mean it. Every everyone who's who's you know is going to be in this damn thing. It's going to be entertaining for that very reason. But here's the thing. I get to respond to all the bullshit, right? When you get one of these talking head idiots on there saying something about me, I get to talk back. It's not just them yelling at their audience and their audience saying, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead, I actually finally get to respond to their bullshit, you see? And that's the point is that this is my format to finally do it. I can respond to them, but if I respond to them here, no one hears it. If I respond to them in the documentary, now that same audience that just heard the toxicity gets to hear my response to it, you see? And again, I want you to understand something. This is not going to be ultra serious at all times. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a project that is going to have a lot of content in it, the kind of which you've not seen from me, okay? It's not just going to be me sitting here on my chair doing games and talking to you. What's the point? If literally the whole documentary was a bunch of shit about me and me just sitting here saying, well, here's the truth about that, here's the truth about that, that's boring. No one cares about that, right? So, that's going to be the difference here, all right? And my goal is that when this thing comes out, okay, <clears throat> when this thing comes out, I want it to be the final go-to source for people to learn about me and my story, and that's that, because I don't want to hear any more bullshit from these people. Not to say that they're not going to continue, because they will. It will always continue. We know this, that these people are so desperate for content when you have no talent you have to milk others for content correct because you have nothing to make for yourself so you have to milk the world around you for content in a toxic way they're never going to go away but at the very least once this story is out it's done for me and i can actually move on positively and say you want answers about anything of my past or anything go watch the mike clum documentary and leave me alone because I'm moving forward with my audience here, right? Will anything positive come out of it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But I don't. The thing is, 
there's so much toxicity and negativity about me on the internet. I don't think you could hurt, right? Really, honestly, you guys are not going anywhere. You guys are here every day. You understand me and who I am and the content I put out. My core audience is going to be with me no matter what. You know the truth. I've already told the stories, right? You're going to get, even you guys are going to get some good stuff out of this documentary. Trust me, there's going to be funny scenes. There's going to be information you've never heard before. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be interesting stuff, all right? And again, I totally understand because there's people in the chat right now who are like, I don't trust it. I think it's, you know, I hear you. I understand because we have, again, we as a community, and I've said this before, it's not just about me. It's about us. Us people with intelligent brains, brains that work, that are hinged properly, right? We're screwed in correctly, right? Everything that I do has an impact on everyone around me, and I know that. So when I did that side-scrollers interview, it wasn't just a shitty situation for me. It was a shitty situation for the community for like two, three months, right? And I hear, I hear you on that. This is very different. From everything that I'm involved with, it's professional, right? I've got, you know, there's agreements in place. You know what I mean? Like this is on the up and up going to be something that's going to be fun and fair. I'm not saying is this, by the way, by no means whatsoever is this kind of a, a kiss my ass thing either. I want you to understand that. That's not the point. It's not supposed to be a documentary where Phil just looks good constantly. I've, I'm a flawed human. I've made many mistakes over the years you know, being a YouTuber way before then as well, and I've fessed up to them. The thing is, no one hears that. No one hears that Phil admitted he did something wrong. Instead, it's just, he's this pig-headed guy who says that he's the best guy ever, right? That's not the case, but no one hears the truth. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I don't think you need to worry as much as you do, especially because, as I said, I'm in a situation here where... It's very different from everything else. It's not, oh, it's just an interview. It's just this or that. This is a situation where it's going to be done in a very professional way, all right? And it's going to actually give my side. It's going to give exclusive information and stuff that you haven't heard. Um, it's going to be very different. Let's put it that way, all right? And by the way, because I know some people are really worried about this, it's something that's not happening right away. This is something that is going to take months and months to put together. Something of this scale and magnitude. You know, this is basically kind of a Netflix level hour long documentary about me. And it's going to take a lot of time. There's going to be filming. There's going to be all kinds of things that's going to happen. So to be transparent with all of you, yes, this is going to affect me this year. Um, there's going to be filming around here. There's going to be filming in studios. You know what I say? There's it's going to be a, a high level thing. This is not fucking around and just doing a few video clips edited together like all the other documentaries about me. This is actually a real product. You understand?